Now, given your stake in Kraft and your public criticism earlier this year about the Kraft Cadbury deal, how would you grade the Kraft Board of Directors' capital allocation and management compensation abilities? What did you think of Kraft CEO Irene Rosenfeld's $26.3 million compensation packages, package for services, including her leadership in completing the Cadbury acquisition and selling Kraft's North American frozen pizza business? Well, I didn't like either the Cadbury decision or the pizza decision, but, but we've made our share of dumb deals at Berkshire, you know, and, and uh, uh, so I, I've gotten more tolerant of other people. And, and incidentally, the fact I think it's a dumb deal doesn't for certain make it a dumb deal, but I think the odds are it was a dumb deal. In fact, I think the odds are that both deals were dumb. The pizza deal was particularly dumb, but in my view. Uh, but just think of all the dumb things we've done, right? Starting with that department store in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a few Irish banks, you know. Yeah, right. It's a reason. We never, seem to, we ne we never get over it. <laughs> yeah. We expect to do some dumb things. It's just we get mad when other people do dumb things with our money. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the pizza business, uh, I'm, uh, somewhere I probably have some figures on that, but they, when they sold the pizza business for $3.7 billion, they announced it as selling it for $3.7 billion. They didn't sell it for $3.7 billion. That's what the other guy paid. What they got was about $2.5 billion. And that was a terribly tax inefficient deal when they'd already shown their ability to understand that you could do a tax efficient deal when they sold the post uh, cereals business earlier. And when they referenced, well, they didn't reference at all what pizza was earning beforehand, but I think, I think that Nestle said it was earning something like 280 million pre-tax, but that was referring to the previous year. When they talked about the Cadbury earnings they were buying, they were talking about next year. And when they talked about the pizza earnings they were selling, they talked about last year. Pizza in 2009, believe it or not, earned 300 and I think 40 million pre-tax. So they got two and a half billion for 340 million of pizza earnings that were growing as fast or faster than the Cadbury earnings and where the sales were growing as fast or fast. Uh, it, it really didn't make sense in my view. Now, you know, Irene is a perfectly capable manager and she may know a lot of things about that business I don't know. And I, like I say, we've made plenty of mistakes ourselves, and, but if it had been me, I would have voted to keep pizza and not buy Cadbury, and I expressed myself, and I don't, I don't do that too often, but we owned a lot of Kraft, and Kraft still is selling for considerably less than the value of its constituent parts, particularly if you value them the way you value Cad they valued Cadbury. But uh, if, uh, if they don't sell them all like they sold pizza, you know the uh, the present price is 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 below uh, the value of Kool Aid and A1 sauce and and and, and uh, Jello and Oscar Mayer wieners and a few things. Uh, th those are very good businesses. I just hated to see them give up a significant portion of those businesses to buy Cadbury at what I felt was a very fancy price. Charlie, I, I, and in terms of her compensation, you know the. Uh, we've got a compensation at system at, at Berkshire that I regard as quite rational, and, and there's a, a lot of companies in the United States that have different compensation systems. <laughs> yeah. I think generally at the top of American businesses, people think they know too much about strategy and they tend to hate the tough competitive conditions and the business they're in, and to yearn for some business where it's less difficult. Do you remember when Xerox bought Crum and Foster, an American insurance company, one of the dumbest acquisitions in all time? The, the reason Xerox did that is they didn't have any tough Japanese competing in the insurance business. They were really tired of facing the tough competition they had in the business they were in. I think it's quite typical to dream if you're in business that something that's a little different, no matter how much you pay for it, will make your troubles less. And you will have an absolute army of lawyers, investment advisors, public relations people, all of whom will have a strong economic interest in having you push ahead on deal after deal after deal. 
regardless of how the shareholders come out. I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's the way it works. <laughs> okay. That's why Berkshire is a better deal. Well, we are very stupid in many ways, but we have avoided a slight subset of stupidities. <laughs> and they're important. <laughs>